and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and most reliable coins on the market right now. Make sure to use code Poodle for 20% off at checkout. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Video Guide. Today, we got the new content. So, today's gonna be flashbacks. Obviously, prior to today, we were getting like daily Mutt Heroes and all that other stuff, but that is over. Mutt Heroes promo is pretty much over. So, my personal opinion on that, Mutt Heroes was kind of like an extended Mutt Superstars where it was a quick hitter, gave us some cards, and then just dipped on us. But that's why most fear is coming out next week, hopefully. Should be announced maybe this Thursday night. That's kind of the hope. So we're waiting on that, obviously. But for the time being, to keep us going through this week, we have flashbacks, heavyweights, veterans, which no one cares about. And then the Mutt 10 player, some team of the weeks. And that's about it. No house rules this week, obviously, because we got one last week. So there's not much to look forward to this week until maybe a special stream on Thursday. So let's go over these flashbacks. See if we can find any enjoyment out of these. I do know one of them so far. that will be over on Twitter, and then I'll have to wait for the next one to be posted on the auction block to know who that one is. But, you know, flashbacks are always underwhelming. Let's make the best of it, though. Let's, make, let's see if these cards are good. They are 89 overalls this time, so they are progressively getting better in stats. So maybe they, well, some of them are going to start making a splash and being able to be used on actual teams. But that will that remains to be uh, to be found until we actually get some good cards. I was excited about one card this year, and it was Landon Collins, and I was also excited about Shady McCoy, but Shady McCoy sucked. So really, just Landon Collins, that was about it, guys. But before we get into this video, guys, don't forget, I am 130 subscribers away from 10K, boys. Everyone watching this, tell your friends, tell everyone, go subscribe to the channel, boys. Let's hit 10K as quickly as possible. Comment down below. Let me know how long you guys have been here from since 300 subs, 1,000 subs, 1,000 subs, etc. Also, drop a big like on the video, boys, for the final day before 10K, hopefully. Let's get 200 likes in this video, boys, if you could so kindly, even though it's a content video, smash the like button. Thank you guys for staying around this long, guys, but let's get into the video. Let's head over to Twitter and check out the first guy's stats. So, guys, the first guy that we're rocking with is Malik Jackson. I was honestly looking at this guy's stats. He's not horrible. Like, for, for a defensive tackle, like, I, I, there is one stat that really gets to me on this card, which I'll go over in the video, but he has some high stats. Flashbacks typically have no stats. He's at, he's at 89 overall defensive tackle. He's 2013 week six. That's quite, that's quite a while ago. That's like seven years ago. That's like actually seven years ago, like today. If you really think about it. What are we, week six right now? That's like exactly seven years ago. 27 salary cap hit. He's six foot five, pretty tall. Let's see what he, I wish I could see what he weighs. I like my defensive tackles nice and meaty, but I guess I won't be able to see that on here. He's 71 speed, 79 excel. For a defensive tackle, that is not horrible. 79 strength is pretty low. I'll give him that. 90 tackle is really good. He's going to be a secure tackler up the middle of the lane. 88 play racks, really good. 80 block shedding is where he gets me. The 89 power move is phenomenal at defensive tackle. If his block shedding was like an 85 and you chem this guy up, you'd have 90 above tackle, 90 above play rec, 90 above power move, and like a high 80 block. So this car would be a monster. Actually, would be one of my top defensive tackle pickups. But that block is going to kill him because he's going to be a good pass rusher. Which, if you're not a big, if you're not versing guys who run that much, I guess you could probably sub him in and have a really great pass rushing defensive tackle. But if they're going to be running the ball, he's going to be a liability. He's going to be easily easily blocked not gonna put any he's not gonna push back at all he's got low strength to fight through and he's got bad block shed so obviously on passing downs gonna be really good but you can't entirely trust him on a lot of runs and we're, we're in a run game of run heavy meta now i don't know how much strength really affects it but i feel like 79 strength and defensive tackle like you want a big strong defensive tackle that can pass rush or run stuff i prefer run stuffing overall because i feel like even if defensive tackles win the shed they'll just get double team which means your end will end doing most of the work and with the way this game plays, I don't really need... I know that means they'll get a double team and the end will be easier to go. But at that point, if they could draw a double team and then the thing slides over, at that point, they probably have the pass already. And if they didn't have a pass already, my defensive end, such as Von Miller, Lawrence Taylor, probably got there anyways already. So in my opinion, I like that run stuffing aspect. I look at that first for defensive tackles. Obviously, I have Demarcus Lawrence in there right now, so I'm just getting a lot of pass rush pressure, which I prefer the run stuff pressure. But we'll work on that as time goes. Now, this Malik Jackson, I imagine, 89 overall, probably going for like 120K, 110K, probably no more. You know, flashbacks hit cheap, cheap, real quick. Now, I wonder who the, I don't know who the next guy will be. At least there are 89 overalls now. So, I anticipate within the next week or two, flashbacks will start hitting 90 overalls, which means we'll finally start getting some more useful flashbacks. And then, when Series 3 uh, kicks off in the beginning of November, I'd imagine that we'll probably get the pack upgraded. And by that, I mean that instead of however much training it costs, it'll cost more. Let's head on over to the store real quick to show you guys that, and then check out the auction box to show you guys a new card. All right, so we're back on the store real quick. Let's head on over to the store to show you guys what I mean by the prices. 
All right, uh, trading currency right here. You're gonna see flashback packs to 2,470, which is a quick sell approximately of an 88. So to avo avoid rerolls this year, they made it so it's 87 plus. So you get 87s, 88s, 89s. 88s break even, right? Let's say let's say these are my let's use three fingers. 88s break even. 89s you get coins. 87 you lose coins. So the way they pretty much do this is. You have a 33% chance to win, a 33% chance to lose, a 33% chance to break even. And in my opinion, breaking even is technically kind of losing too. So you only have a 33% chance to make coins with a 66% chance to lose coins. So in my opinion, they really try to kill the rerolls this year. So then inevitably, in the next CS series, when they drop 90 overall cards, this training value will probably go up to about whatever the next one is from an 88. It's like 3,640. That's probably what it'll be next. They're going to just keep increasing it to always make it even so you can't really reroll it too heavy. Now let's go check the auction block for the new cards. I don't know if that would have been pulled already. I will also check my head in a second. But are flashback packs worth it? I do not think so. Especially initially, right when they first drop, those cards go crazy cheap. You literally have to pull the best one and you have to pull it right away and sell it right away. You literally have no time to even think about it. That is my issue with flashback packs. I personally don't open them. It's just a good way to lose coins. Could you occasionally get coins? Yeah. But more than likely you won't. Flashbacks to see who I wonder who actually wakes up on like a Monday morning and says, let me pull some flashback packs today. So I'm gonna go with it's Ben Roethlisberger. I'd have to imagine it is. 1014, yeah, that's it. It's Ben Roethlisberger. It's gotta be Big Ben. I've never seen this card before, and it just got pulled right now. So Big Ben, 89 overall quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is out for season. He's gone for quite a while. He probably won't be back next year. And even back next year, who knows if he even still have a job. You never know how people come back from things like this. 2014 week eight. Like I always say, I wish I really told you what they did on that day. That'd be pretty cool. He's got 40 salary cap hit. He's got a, a commander looking general archetype. Six foot five, 70 speed. 70 speed's decent. Not, nothing special, but it'll, it'll get the job done if you're wide, wide open for like 20 yards and like a four verts. You'll get, you'll get like 10 yards. 89 throw power is pretty good. 86 throw accuracy short. 86 throw accuracy mid. 85 throw accuracy deep. 80 throw under pressure. 85 throw on the run. 80 play action. He's a jack of all trades. He can do everything decent, but nothing well, nothing great. He's pretty. That's pretty much what he is. I mean, if you compare him to a mobile quarterback, so this is the issue, right? So if you compare him to like Lamar Jackson, you might initially think, oh, his passing stats might actually be uh, close, if not better. But the thing is, like Lamar Jackson, if he couldn't run, would be a horrendous quarterback. His running is what makes what makes him what he is without running he would just be a, a, like an overrated overpriced really bad backup quarterback so Ben Roethlisberger's stats where he has no speed so without his speed he's just a Lamar Jackson passer I could not recommend getting Ben Roethlisberger in any way shape or form let's see what price is he going for he's 163 let's see if there's any more these 88s are actually going for 83k I don't know if you guys see this but oh is that like a snipe training's probably really really cheap right now check out by now the training is really cheap. If you guys want to training right now, flashbacks on Flashback Monday are always the move when it comes to picking up your training. So I do not see the Malik Jackson yet, but I do definitely see Ben Roethlisberger. There's Malik Jackson, 180K. Yeah, Malik Jackson's not horrible. His price will probably stay up a little bit more. Ben Roethlisberger's not too great. I don't see him staying up too high. Let's see if he has any intangibles like trucking or something because he's a big quarterback. 60 trucking, which actually isn't horrible. Thought it'd be worse. A 73 stiff arm. Okay, that's not horrible for a quarterback. Although I don't recommend you stiff arm with Ben Roethlisberger. If you do that, you won't be happy what happens next. He most likely will fumble. Let's see. Actually, I want to see what Malik Jackson's impact blocking is too, because that is, I think, I think impact block is important. Although for defensive tackles, it isn't, but if someone does pull off of you and you have to make another block, like 90 impact blocking. Okay, so his impact blocking is really, really good. 90 pursuit. I mean, this card, honestly, I really do like this card. His block shit is just killer. I wish it was slightly better, guys. That does kind of kill this card. I also want to call the flashback promo. The killer stat. Every week, the flashback promo gives you something that looks like it could be promising, but there's a killer stat. You look at Joe Hayden, right? This car could be promising, but his speed's too slow. Killer stat. Jarvis Landry, this car could be good. Killer speed. That hit kills the car. Landon Collins could be really good. They don't give him any coverage. You have to literally put him in the box. That's the only way you can use him, which makes he's still good, though. He's one of the better ones. Jason Verrett could be really good. He actually is pretty good. See, like, uh, see here you go. He's one of the examples of guys that are actually not horrible occasionally I drop a guy that's not horrible guys that is about it for the video thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys did enjoy this flashback content uh sorry for that little last minute rant on flashbacks they just get to me they have good names good cards a few bad stats kills the card every time but that is about it for the video thank you guys so much for watching if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button 
Turn on that noti bell, boys. We're so close to 10K, 130 away. Let's make it happen as soon as possible. I'd greatly appreciate it if we could hit by tonight. So make sure you're smashing that sub button. Comment down below how long you've been here if you're an OG. And if you're an OG, also like the video. Let's get this video to 200 likes, boys. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. See you guys next video. Peace.